Hi everybody, my name is Inge Drom and welcome to my thesis proposal defense. Uh, before starting, I would like to thank my supervisor, Rob van Wensberg, and my committee members, Lucy Thibault, uh, Andrew Smith, and Laura Hurt clark for their help. Uh, the title of my presentation is Hosting and Leveraging Sport Events to Increase Physical Activity. The Tour of Flanders as a case study of both an elite and mass participation event and specific event setting. The Tour of Flanders is a major cycling event that has been hosted annually since 1913 in and around the same cities in Flanders, which is the northern part of Belgium. The event is sanctioned by the International Cycling Union and is referred to as Flanders' finest. Only three cities have hosted the start of the event, whereas seven has ho have hosted the finish. There is competition among cities to gain the rights to host, and there is uh, quite some money involved in that. Um, in 2012, the city of Bruges paid the organizing body of the Tour of Flanders 100,000 euros to stage the start. <coughs> this amount is expected to double by 2016. Other levels of government have also invested in the Tour of Flanders. The Flemish government has granted the event a subsidy of 142,000 euros in 2010 because it promotes elite sport and Flanders at the world stage. Approximately 34 million people in Europe view some elements of the Tour of Flanders on television. <clears throat> the purpose of my research is to understand how sport events can increase physical activity participation. I believe that the Tour of Flanders is an interesting case to investigate. The Tour as a brand consists of many subunits. For instance, there is the Women's Tour of Flanders, which has been held every year since 2004 on the same day as the men's race. The other picture is from the Retro Tour of Flanders. This is an interesting event. It's a 40 or 70 kilometer race in which non-elite participants imitate the early Tour of Flanders by dressing up in old cycling jerseys and riding on old bicycles. I will ex uh, examine the following three subunits in my case study. <coughs> the elite sport event, the mass participation event, and the specific event setting. I described the elite sport event earlier, so Excuse me. So I will now briefly describe the mass participation event and specific event setting. Since 1999, the Tour of Flanders has been a two-day event. On the first day, uh, the mass participation event takes place. On the second day, it's the elite sport event. So the um, non-elite participants have the opportunity to ride, to ride the same course as the elite cyclists. They can choose between distances between 40 and 244 kilometers. <coughs> in 2012, approximately 15,000 people took part in a mass participation event, and one-fifth of those completed the longest route. <coughs> in 2000, in 2000 um, the organizing body of the Tour of Flanders first selected the village of the Tour to highlight a specific village along the road. The route. Uh, Reckham was, was selected as the 2013, <coughs> excuse me, 2013 village of the tour um, and they were officially presented as a candidate in October 2011 and um, they won the, the rights to be the village of the tour in uh, July of 2012. The event itself takes place in March of 2013. So being the village of the tour has influenced city planning and policy for almost two years. Uh, being the village of the tour is a title that host cities <coughs> can receive only once. And it is expected to generate interest in the elite sport event, in cycling and physical activity. In order to understand how sport events can increase physical activity, I will examine hosting and leveraging of these three subunits. <coughs> it is important to elaborate a little bit on the conceptual differences between hosting and leveraging. So by hosting, um, 
uh, we refer to the automatic event impacts that are anticipated from hosting a sport events and these mostly relate to job creation, tourism development, etc. So event impacts are positive or negative effects <coughs> of planned event projects and result automatically from hosting the event. So these are referred to being event-led, for instance a sport facility that is being built uh, to stage the event. Event leveraging, on the um, other hand, is more strategic. Event leveraging is not required to stage the event. So event outcomes are positive or negative effects of planned parallel projects um, that are strategically designed to create uh, certain outcomes and to capitalize on hosting the event. Uh, these are referred to as event teamed. Uh, for instance, a volunteer program that targets specific groups within the city. Uh, event leveraging increasingly involves the development and implementation of public policy. The literature that describes hosting and leveraging events for uh, physical activity <coughs> excuse me, um, describes uh, three effects. Uh, it describes hosting through uh, the demonstration effect and participation effect and leveraging through the festival effect and I will describe uh, all three effects. So first, there is the demonstration effect. It assumes that watching elite athletes perform inspires or motivates individuals at the grassroots level to participate in physical activity. So what do we know about the demonstration effect? We know that simply hosting elite sport events will not increase physical activity uh, among the host population. This will not occur automatically. In a few occasions that there has uh, that people have seen an effect, this has been short term. There is little evidence that the demonstration effect might work for uh, people who are currently active or recently lapsed. Um, however, previous studies that have examined the demonstration effect have adopted a successionist or con configurational approach to causality, which I won't explain in great detail. But uh, scholars have argued that we should use an, a generative approach to causality uh, and that we should elaborate on the context. I seek to elaborate on the context by focusing on uh, um, the sport event, whether it's a, the elite mass participation event or the specific event context, uh, event setting. And I will also elaborate on the context by seeking how uh, hosting and leveraging these events have changed the host city. So by doing so, I will seek to identify how the demonstration and other effects work, for whom and in what context. And this, this research is necessary to better host and leverage future events. So let's uh, continue with the participation effect. The participation effect assumes that by means of participating in and training for the mass participation event, inactive individuals will increase their physical activity and already active individuals will maintain their physical activity. So what do we know about the participation effect? Participation effect is supported by the literature that measures pre and post event physical activity. Um, what we don't know actually is how these events can be leveraged. Um, so we know that there is a positive health impact but we don't know how these impacts or how we can create positive outcomes for uh, a greater number of uh, residents. Then there is the festival effect. Festival effect assumes that individuals uh, that participate in event themed activities will be motivated to partake in physical activity. So when cities are hosting elite sport events, they create celebrations, initiatives, and activities that can be bundled together to create a festival for host residents. This festival is not required to stage the event, but it is strategically designed to achieve other objectives. Um, what do we know about the festival effect? Um, some researchers argue that by um, implementing uh, initiatives in conjunction with the event, um, we will likely to see uh, increases in physical activity. Others have argued that these uh, 
interventions should be part of a broader and long-term strategy in which the sport event is only one element. Although research has reported successful economic and cultural festivals around elite sport events, we do not know the context that is necessary to plan a successful festival for physical activity outcomes. So based on the previous three slides, we know that there is no explanatory theory um, for physical activity impacts and outcomes um, around sport events. Uh, the demonstration and festival effects, as opposed to the participation effects, are not grounded in empirical research. In order to make a significant contribution to the literature, the proposed study will test the three effects uh, in the case of the Tour of Flanders um, by framing the study within social ecological theory. I will first briefly touch upon the theory uh, and then explain how it relates to hosting and leveraging sport events. According to social ecological theory, an individual's health is determined by individual factors and by the environment in which the individuals live. The environment contains different levels. There are interpersonal factors social that refer to social support, friends, family. There are organizational factors that relate to school or work, community factors such as recreational facilities or access to facilities, and policy factors. For instance, in Vancouver, we have now have the leisure access policy for people on low income. Um, this figure presents an overview of the social ecological model. And on the right hand side, I have summarized the levels into public policy, built environment, social environment and individual levels. This is ne necessary to relate the social ecological model to uh, sport events later on. Um, the relationships between individuals and their environments are complex. Higher order levels, which is from uh, the outside to the inside, uh, are mechanisms that act as catalysts to change lower order levels. Uh, lower order levels are embedded in and constrained by the levels um, that surround it. So uh, scholars have argued that changing the environment is fundamental to changing an individual's behavior. An example is that at the school, so at the organizational level, if a school decides to ban unhealthy foods from school property, they will change uh, the healthy eat or they will ch change the eating habits among uh, students and create healthy eating habits. So, secondly, higher order levels have inputs on the lower order levels and vice versa. So, for instance, advocacy groups are often very powerful and influential um, to get policy set or laws passed that relate to pedestrian or bicycle infrastructure. The policy level is very important in any health promotion intervention and in the social ecological model because policy change can take place at any other level. So what this means is that a policy can result in changes at the built environment, social environment and individual level for instance via a transportation policy or a school-based physical education policy. So how does this model relate to hosting and leveraging sport events? Um, by grounding the study in social ecological theory, I will conceptualize sport events as health promotion interventions. And health promotion is defined as the planned interventions aimed at making changes at the environmental or individual levels. By conceptualizing sport events as health promotion interventions, the three effects are believed to result in physical activity impacts and outcomes by modifying different levels from the model. Uh, and I will explain each effect now uh, with some examples. Uh, the demonstration and participation effect relate to hosting and event impacts, whereas the festival effect uh, relates to leveraging and event outcomes. So the demonstration effect um, assumes that by watching elite athletes, we will be motivated to participate in physical activity. This effect is assumed to work uh, by modifying individual um, factors. So for instance, I will uh, increase my knowledge uh, or attitudes and motives related to physical activity by seeing the performances of elite athletes. 
My third study seeks to better understand the demonstration effect, firstly by seeing, uh, by exploring how um, cities have, have seen an increase in physical activity after hosting these events, and also by uh, exploring how participants in the mass participation event are inspired by the elite athletes. Secondly, we have the participation effect, and the figure shows that this not only uh, changes the individual, but also the social environment. So the participation effect assumes that by means of participating in and training for a mass participation effect, inactive individuals will increase their physical activity and already active individuals will maintain physically active. So not only will I increase my knowledge, intentions, um, capacities maybe by uh, cycling the event, uh, uh, a race between 40 and 244 kilometers on the race day, but I will also train for the event. And um, I, will tra I might train with family members, friends or co-workers or join a cycling club. And this relates to the social environment. Um, interpersonal and organizational relationships might provide support and encouragement during training. The social environment might, might also be a factor, an important factor, at maintaining my physical activity uh, in the post-event stage. Lastly, we have the festival effect, and this effect assumes that by means of participating in event-themed activities, individuals uh, will be encouraged to take part in physical activity. Festival effect has the potential to modify all the levels of the social ecological model. Uh, however, this has only been explained in the context of elite sport events. So, for instance, in the case of the 2010 Games in Vancouver, we saw that there uh, was a public policy implemented uh, called uh, Vancouver Active Communities to increase physical activity participation among uh, the wider population in the lead up to the Games. There was also a new uh, public recreation infrastructure built, um, which included two ice rinks, um, an aquatic center, etc., um, to create an Olympic legacy. So this was done to capitalize on hosting the Olympic Games. Festival effect has not been examined in uh, case of the mass participation effect, uh, mass participation event. In order to be effective and achieve enduring changes, health promotion interventions should address multiple levels of the social ecological model. Sally's and colleagues note that a comprehensive approach to physical activity promotion should create supportive policies and environments and then motivate people to take advantage of those opportunities. So therefore, event leveraging um, has the potential to modify all the levels of the social ecological model. And this is important to achieve physical activity outcomes. However, event leveraging of mass participation events has the greatest uh, potential because it can combine the demonstration, participation and festival effects. However, this has not received any research attention so far. Uh, the methodology that I selected for this uh, study was a case study methodology. The main reason for selecting uh, this approach is the contextual detail and the in-depth understanding that it brings about the case. I will employ an embedded single case study design with three uh, subunits, the elite sport event, mass participation event, and specific event setting. And I will uh, use both qualitative and quantitative research methods. The research uh, objective for the entire case study is to determine how the hosting and leveraging of sport events can increase physical activity participation. Uh, more specifically, I ask uh, what evidence exists to support the demonstration, festival and or participation theories, and how, for whom, and in what context uh, do these theories work. In order to answer this question, four data sources will be collected and analyzed across the three subunits. Uh, archival documents, policy documents, interview data and survey data. And I will describe uh, data collection and analysis of these four. So to start off with archival documents, 
Uh, the inclusion of archival documents is possible because the Tour of Flanders has been hosted since 1913. So it's very popular, it's a cultural monument in Flanders. So different museums have been dedicated to this elite sport event, but also to cycling in general or sport in general. I will visit and collect data from these, this, these museums. Furthermore, large cities that have hosted the tour might have their own collections about the event. <clears throat> Examples of relevant uh, documents are books, reports, uh, minutes of meetings, etc. The purpose of collecting these documents is to create a narrative for each city, including some of the highs and lows of hosting this event. Um, I, will, I will ask questions of, of why is this event so popular, why do cities want to host it, etc. This will provide relevant context for my city, uh, for my study, rather. Um, two important uh, books that are actually a collection of archival documents are these two about the history of the sport event, uh, about the tour. The next uh, data source is policy documents. So um, I will collect policy documents from five cities, Sydney, Klaas, Meerbeke, Brugge and Oudenaarde, the four most recent host cities of the Tour of Flanders, and Rekem, which is the village of the tour uh, in 2013. These cities represent, are, represent um, the timeline from 1990 to uh, 2013. So you might ask why uh, create this cutoff at 1990? Well, authors have described how the problem of the obesity epidemic emerged as a policy problem in the late 1990s. Since then, obesity prevention has, been a, has become a key element on government's health agendas across the world. So obesity prevention includes a focus on physical activity participation. The Flemish government has also uh, implemented an action plan to increase physical activity participation among the Flemish population by 2015, making physical inactivity an important and fairly recent health issue. I'm assuming that these uh, municipalities will cluster health, economic and mobility problems together and focus on leveraging the elite sport to alleviate some of these problems. Um, I will collect policy documents online and I will contact these municipalities uh, to request relevant information. A qualitative content analysis will be uh, conducted on the policy documents. Uh, the purpose is to generate a profile uh, for each policy. Uh, this profile will include basic information such as who was involved, uh, what is the purpose of the policy, um, what is the social ecological level that it attempts to modify, uh, are there any theoretical assumptions that are made in the policy, etc. Uh, the purpose of these policies is to provide preliminary answers to the research questions, define gaps in the documents and provide context to the interviews. So here are two examples. Uh, there's uh, mobility or transportation plans from the city of Bruges and Oudenaarde. For instance, Bruges has the vision uh, to become a cycling city and invest in safe um, and comfortable cycling infrastructure. They seek to continue, continuously promote the use of the bicycle. So it will be interesting to see how the hosting of the Tour of Flanders fits in this vision. And then I will continue with the interview data. Um, I will con conduct uh, key informant interviews in the same cities as I will uh, collect policy documents. The purpose of these interviews is to investigate the theories and assumptions that are built into the policy. So about how and why the policy will work in alleviating a specific problem. And I will examine whether these assumptions are supported by evidence. Uh, so I will collect, conduct interviews with government officials who were and are involved in developing or implementing relevant policies. These interviewees will most likely have experience in the transportation, tourism, culture or sport departments. Uh, the technique that I will use for sampling is purposeful sampling. I plan to conduct 10 to 13 interviews and in the current, uh, they will be semi-structured and in the current cities, Host cities, uh, I hope to um, include a pre 
and post event uh, survey um, to sort of follow uh, the planning and the hosting and legacy of the event uh, in the three current host cities. Here are some of the example questions. So how did the city become involved in hosting the event? Why is it important to develop a policy that emphasizes physical activity, etc.? What does the policy intend to deliver and achieve? And, and what is the cost? And is it re uh, reason reasonable in relation to the magnitude of benefits? And the interview data will be analyzed uh, using Atlas TI version 7. Uh, I will use a grounded theory approach, uh, which means that I won't develop a predetermined code list and the uh, coding will be uh, inductively. Um, three types of codes will be used, open coding, actual, actual coding and selective coding. Um, and I hope uh, to find evidence for the demonstration festival and or participation theories. And the last data source in this case study is uh, the survey data. I will um, I have developed uh, a survey that consists of open and closed ended questions. Um, and the Colazo, which is the um, owner of the mass participation event, has agreed to send out um, an email to all participants two weeks to the prior to the event and invite them to participate in my uh, in my survey. So in the pre-event uh, survey, participants will be asked to reflect on their physical activity prior to starting training for the event and after starting training for the event. And in the post-event uh, survey, they will ask to reflect on their post-event physical activity. By doing so, I will be able to um, see if there's an impact of the event on physical activity participation. Other questions will uh, include the importance of the elite sport event and public policy and the built environment. How important are these elements um, in getting people physically active? Uh, some example questions uh, are uh, please indicate how you feel best describes the influence of the Tour of Flanders on your physical activity participation. So this will uh, ask about uh, once they started training for the event, are they participating more at the same level, less, etc. This is another question uh, about the built environment. If you can make a recommendation to your local government to change one element in your built environment to get local residents more physically active, what would that be? Quantitative data will be analyzed using SPSS version 19.0. Um, I will examine some correlations, for instance, between uh, previous event participation and the importance of the elite sport event. Uh, repeated measures ANOVA will be used uh, to determine whether physical activity changed pre and post event. Um, regression analysis will be used to determine whether some variables predict post-event physical activity. Uh, the study will examine the potential of leveraging mass participation events via modifying the built environment and public policy in host cities. And finally, I will uh, touch upon three limitations of the study. Firstly, the study assumes that event leveraging to achieve social outcomes related to physical activity occurs. However, research has shown that event leveraging adds to the pressures of hosting and planning. So activities that are not required to stage the event are often the first ones being cut if time or financial pressures arise. Uh, the second limitation is that I assume that the obesity emerged on the public health agenda in the 1990s. And therefore I will conduct, uh, I will collect policy documents and conduct interviews uh, starting from that period. If earlier cities have followed a similar path, I hope to find out about this via the archival documents. Um, and the last limitation is that there have been 13 cities who have been village of the tour since 2000, and I will only analyze uh, one of those. So I, su I assume that the findings about Reckham will be transferable or applicable to previous host cities, 
uh, but future research in the area in this area is of course uh, necessary. Well, with this beautiful picture of the benefits of a bicycle, I would like to thank you uh, for your attention and I welcome any questions uh, or suggestions. Bye.